Try to start with a week with some decent spells of sunshine, but it turns wetter and windier by the end of the week and into the weekend. All details of that and more live from the Thames Barrier. There will finally be some sunshine after what was some pretty heavy rain yesterday. And actually the week ahead doesn't look too bad. But we are here at the Thames Barrier this morning. There's 10 huge steel gates here. Uh, but this will be good for the next 50 years. And after that, they're going to have to put plans in place with rising sea levels to see the impact that it could have on the London area. So much more money is going to be need to be invested here and around the country as well to cope with this sea level rise. Uh, but weather-wise, as you mentioned, yes, plenty of fine dry weather around. High pressure dominates for the start of the week. We had those heavy showers. Yesterday for East Anglia and the South East. Still a few showers for East Anglia and South East England this morning, but they'll quickly ease as we head through the day. Mist and fog through northern areas of England, dense in places, and cloudy over for the northwest of Scotland with some patchy rain. But elsewhere, a good looking day ahead with temperatures high teens, low 20s. Through this evening and overnight tonight, we see a cloud moving in across northwestern areas of the UK, but elsewhere, fine and dry. A chilly start, plenty of sunshine, and again, temperatures into the low 20s. Laura. Good morning to you. It is a fine, dry start to the day to the day. Actually, for most of us, lots of dry weather around as we head through the week. Make the most of that because this weekend is set to turn very wet and very windy. But first thing this morning, we still have some thicker clouds for parts of East Anglia and South East England. The legacy of yesterday's heavy rain and showers that we had that warning for, that's now slowly starting to ease and clear away. Cloud will thicken for the northwest of Scotland with some patchy rain, but in between some decent sunshine and temperatures climbing into the high teens, low 20s. As we head through this evening and overnight, the last of that cloud for southeastern areas of England clears away. And for much of England and Wales, quite a chilly night to come tonight. Scotland and Northern Ireland and slowly clouding over with some light patchy rain and drizzle and first thing tomorrow morning fresh particularly in the south and then Tuesday actually is looking good plenty of sunshine around the outlook though is for cloudier skies and outbreaks of rain for northern areas for Scotland and Northern Ireland on Wednesday and Thursday. Yes, it was closed yesterday, not because of flooding, but because of its annual maintenance. And the next time it closes will be the 200th operational time it's done so. It protects an area of London, London 125 kilometres square. That's around about 1.25 million people. When they have a big storm surge with climate change, that's happening more and more often. Projections are this will be absolutely fine for the next 50 years. But of course, Boris Johnson today and all this week talking to President Biden about climate change. And that's something we'll be looking at here, how we can help to mitigate it and have more flood defences not just here but right around the country. Weather-wise this morning it's a little bit cloudy first thing here but for many of us it is set to be a dry bright day ahead. Yesterday we had the heavy showers and thunderstorms for East Anglia in the southeast. They're now clearing and easing as we head through the day and then Scotland and Northern Ireland slowly clouding over from the northwest but by and large a fine and dry in between and temperatures today high teens low 20s. Another decent looking day tomorrow after a bit of a chilly start. Plenty of sunshine around largely dry before we see wet and winter weather for Northern Ireland on Wednesday and Thursday. Thing it's about flying less, but the flying and those in-person meetings are so important. You know, I knew about climate change, I'd read about the Arctic, but being there and seeing it before my eyes I had a much better understanding and was able to give a much better report to the audience. Also, John Kerry, who's the Biden's climate envoy, went to China last week and spoke to them face to face about them and cutting their emissions. And that's much more important, those face to face meetings. That's why it's so important for that to happen this week with our uh, Prime Minister and the President of the United States. But flying itself contributes to two and a half percent of our global greenhouse gas emissions it's it's a small percentage but it's certainly big enough but one thing I would say is never say don't fly but if people could fly less and that's what we have been doing and we saw the last year and a half with the pandemic emissions fell by seven percent so seven percent lower than they would have been had we not been our business as usual lives so the, the way we've cut down and what we've been doing definitely will help but we would need that every year for 10 years to meet our our targets so these these little changes that actually overall make a really big difference mm -hmm. and so, yeah so seven it I guess it depends how many times you do it. I mean, I flew to Svalbard last week, obviously. Before that, I haven't actually been abroad on holiday for about 10 years, so I choose to stay local for my holidays. That's my choice. But, you know, people are... I think it's really important to look to offset as well. There's a lot of people saying that offsetting is good or bad, but you just need to be able to cover your footprint if you are going to do these things. I think it's... And that's the thing with me last week, I wasn't telling anyone what to do, I was reporting on climate change. For anybody who was wondering, we all flew uh, regular class, we didn't fly business, even if I'd been offered it, I wouldn't have flown that. And, you know, what our footprint was, was far outweighed by the millions of people watching our reports. Sorry. So, yeah, it's leading by example. Um, for now, or was it, were we just, yes, okay, here we go. 
Yes, yes, I'll bring you the weather. So we're here at the Thames Barrier because we were talking about the impacts of climate change. This was designed initially to protect from a once in a thousand year flood in 2030. It's now had a big maintenance that happens annually. Yesterday, the flood barriers were closed for that. And the next time it closes will be the 200th time and it protects 1.25 million Londoners, an area 1.27 square kilometers. And it's things like this that need investment from the government to make sure they can protect us in the future. But weather-wise this morning, cloudy start it was actually bright first thing this morning but a pretty good looking day ahead for many of us the rain and thunderstorms for southeastern areas of England have now eased and will be clearing as we head through the day the northwest of Scotland clouding over with some outbreaks of rain but in between some decent spells of sunshine top temperatures high teens low 20s more of the same tomorrow barrier work when it closes to, against a, a big tidal surge which protects London from flooding as you say what happens to all that water how come it doesn't sort of just go here is a massive flood plain so when this area does float flood and down there are some picnic benches they all float so everything everything sort of from where we are standing downwards can can fill with water and everywhere will still be protected and not flood got it thank you brilliant Laura thank you very much indeed right 7:42. Welcome back to Good Morning Britain. We're live at the Thames Barrier today, which was closed yesterday for its annual maintenance. And the next time it's closed operationally will be the 200th time it's done so. It protects an area of London 1.25 kilometres squared and around about 1.25 million people as well. And we're talking about climate change. This here now has all the defences it needs to protect this area for the next 50 years. And after that, of course, more funding needed for here and around the country to protect our coastlines from flooding. But when Otherwise, let me tell you, it's looking not too bad as we head through this week. It's cloudy first thing this morning, particularly for southeastern areas where we have the legacy of yesterday's rain and showers that thankfully are lighter and will ease through the day. Clouding over for the northwest of Scotland where we've got some outbreaks of rain moving in, but for many of us, a dry day ahead and where the sunshine breaks through and it will do for many. We're talking high teens, low 20s for our temperatures, just a little above average. The outlook for tomorrow, a cold start first thing, but plenty of sunshine. Through the day, it clouds over in the northwest and that's the theme for Wednesday and Thursday too. I would love to be a wall winner. I thought that was a new intro to my weather. I was really excited then. Uh, good morning. We are at the Thames Barrier this morning. It closed yesterday for its annual maintenance. The next time it closes will be the 200th operational time. It has done so. First thing this morning was bright. It's now clouded over. But actually, for the most part of the working week, there's a fair bit of dry weather around. First thing this morning, we've got mist and fog clearing. Southeastern areas, the rain will slowly clear with some sunshine today. Top temperatures, high teens, low 20s, and more of sunshine tomorrow.